Well, tonight, the widow of a North Carolina man shot and killed by Mooresville police by a police officer who filed a lawsuit now says that her husband was complying with officers' commands right before shots were fired. Chris Graven was shot outside of his home in August of last year. Fox 46's Lindsay Klein joins us live now. And Lindsay, you looked through this lawsuit. Um, what have you been able to learn? Yeah, so I have a copy of the lawsuit here in my hands detailing that deadly shooting that took place in August of last year. Two of Mooresville police officers Christopher Novelli and Alex Arndt, as well as the town of Mooresville, are being sued for actions Amy Craven calls excessive and unreasonable under the circumstances. This is video that was taken last summer outside the Craven's home on Heritage Place, shortly after Chris Craven was shot and killed by Mooresville police officers. The 911 call came from the Craven's older daughter, who reported her father was threatening to commit suicide. When police got there, they say Craven was in front of the home with a gun. They say they gave him multiple commands, but he reached for his gun and officers fired their weapons. His widow, though, claims that Craven listened and complied with the officer's commands and never threatened them. In the lawsuit, she says, as Chris began to put his hands down as ordered, Officer Novelli shot him, firing more than 10 shots at close range with a high-powered rifle. The lawsuit says approximately 20 bullets struck Craven's body. Last summer, we spoke with a neighbor who witnessed the entire incident. Police officer was over him with a gun and said to stay down and get back. Um, and then more police started coming. In the lawsuit, Craven says Chris was experiencing a mental health crisis. Craven is suing each officer as well as the town of Mooresville for at least $25,000 each. And the lawsuit also claims that the town failed to properly train officers on how to deal with de-escalation during suicidal incidents. We did reach out to her and her lawyer. They were both unavailable today. And Patrick Flanagan, who's representing the defendants, also said he had no comment on this pending litigation at this time.